My name is Kamran Shadmiri, and me and my lab partner, John Erickson, designed and 3D printed a diffraction grating monochromator. In this presentation, we are going to be talking about the underlying physics of monochromators, as well as our design process and how we calibrated our apparatus. A monochromator is a device that separates polychromatic light or white light into a spectrum of its component wavelengths to then filter out all but the desired wavelength. The white light is separated using either a prism or a diffraction grating. In our case, we used a diffraction grating. Monochromators are very valuable to the field of optics as many experiments require light of a specific wavelength. Important physics and math related equations that we used when we designed our monochromator was the grading equation as well as some basic trigonometry. The grading equation was created by Joseph von Fraunhofer and it is alpha sine theta equals m lambda, where alpha is the spacing between the slits, also known as the grading period, m is the order of diffraction, lambda is the wavelength, and theta is the angle of diffraction. We use this equation when designing the housing unit for our monochromator, which we will go into later in this presentation. We use the grading equation to find theta for each desired wavelength, then used theta to find the distance each desired wavelength will be from the center of the back end of our housing unit by using 100 sine theta, some basic trigonometry, uh, 100 millimeters, is the height of our monochromator. So by finding the angle that light, that the wavelength we need is being diffracted through the diffraction grating and using 100 sine of that angle, we are able to find the distance from the center of the back end of our housing unit of which each wavelength will be projected and observed. In this slide, we have a diagram of the basic stages our light goes through to be filtered into a specific wavelength. The sun is used as a light source because it is so distant, the light that comes in is essentially collimated. The light then enters the entrance slit and hits the diffraction grating, splitting the light into two spectra on either side. Then there is an exit slit that can slide up and down, allowing only a small range of wavelengths to come out. The first part we created in SOLIDWORKS we call the inlet. This is where collimated light from the sun will be entering our monochromator at zero degrees incident angle. The dimensions of the slit that light enters through is about 0 0.06 by 0 0.39 inches. And the holes that connect the inlet to the housing unit are about 0 0.28 inches. This part will be aimed directly at the sun, and then once collimated light passes through that slit, it will then pass through a transmissive diffraction grating and be split into its component wavelengths, which we will observe at the back end of the housing unit. The second piece we designed and 3D printed, we called the housing. The rods on the top are approximately two millimeters smaller in diameter than the holes in the inlet piece. The angle of the slanted sides is 38 degrees, which works out to fit the full spectrum from 350 nanometers to 650 nanometers on either side. The last part we designed we called the slider. It is a part that allows the observer to slide the exit slit along the spectrum at the back end of the housing and get only that desired wavelength. Because it is about one and a half feet long, we had to print it in five separate parts connected by cylinders going into holes on the other side of the part next to it, as well as putting ridges so that it connects to the housing unit and doesn't let any ambient light in through the sides. The exit slit, it has the same dimensions as the inner slit on the inlet part. This is an image of our finished monochromator. As you can see, there is a scale on the slide that will predict the wavelength of light that will exit the slit. The scale has white light in the middle and ranges from purple at about 350 nanometers to red at about 650 nanometers as you move further from the center. These two pictures were taken of the setup that we used to take data 
As you can see, the monochromator is duct taped pretty intensively to make sure that no ambient light gets into the experiment, as well as to make sure that it does not fall off of the tripod that we used. Tripods are not necessary for this experiment. They're not crucial to your data. We used one because we had one, so we did not include it into the budget of this project. If you needed one, you can rent one very cheaply online or you can come up with more creative solutions, such as having one person hold it and one person take pictures of the wavelengths. We also do not recommend that you take pictures using this setup outside of the physics building because you will get a lot of weird looks. Calibration and effectiveness. First, using the grading equation, we calculated the angle at which each wavelength would project from 350 nanometers to 650 nanometers at 50 nanometer increments. Using the calculated angles and respective to theta the adjacent length, which was 100 millimeters long, we were able to calculate the location on our apparatus that each of the wavelengths would project. Below we have an image of our scale, which has white light in the middle and a visible light spectrum on the outsides. We tested the effectiveness of our monochromator by taking four measurements at 50 nanometer increments from 350 nanometers to 650 nanometers and compared those to what was predicted by the slide. We used a smartphone app to analyze the wavelength of the light exiting the slit. On this slide you can see our experimental spectrum. Each of these pictures was taken by our monochromator and we believe it's pretty on point. As you can see, we included two graphs below it just to show how close our data is to the data that should be observed at those specific wavelengths. You can kind of see that our observed wavelengths were pretty similar to the spectrum and the expected wavelengths. To obtain this data, we took a total of 28 pictures, four pictures for each wavelength, we started at 350 nanometers and went to 650 at 50 nanometer increments. In this slide, we have screenshots from an app that we used to analyze the light that exited our monochromator. This app was very useful because it allowed you to line the crosshairs up in the top screen with the particular light you wanted to analyze. Then, you would look at the plot below and it would show you exactly what was inside the crosshairs. We would take a screenshot when we had the desired light lined up and analyze the plots later for comparison with our scale. To analyze our data, we created plots in IPython. In the first plot, we are seeing each data point which represents the average of our data collected for each wavelength. You can see that our data points fluctuate from the theoretical value. We believe that because you can see fluctuations above and below the predicted line, it means that the deviations were likely due to something other than a design flaw. In the next plot, we are seeing the actual errors of our data points when compared to the predicted line. By analyzing this, we observed that the larger the wavelength is, the smaller the amount of error on either side of the data point, and we believe this is due to the steeper angle that larger wavelengths were measured at compared to the angle of the exit slit. Here we have the budget and alternative designs. With our budget, most of it went to the material for 3D printing. We calculated this by weighing our apparatus and comparing to the total cost of a spool of 3D printing material. We spent a dollar on a diffraction grading and four dollars on duct tape. While this was a pretty cost-effective project, we could have saved some money using cardboard instead of a 3D printer for some of the main pieces. Another place that could have saved money was using an old CD instead of a diffraction grading, as it would perform the same. In conclusion, the observed wavelengths from our data have minimal deviation from their expected values and we believe the design errors in our monochromator came from the staggered nature of the scale we created and a small error caused by the 3D printer on the housing unit. Because these small errors did not stop us from getting our desired wavelengths, we did not need to redesign our apparatus. 
We believe that the biggest change we would make if we were to redesign our monochromator would be to choose a radially equidistant housing and slide piece because that would allow for each wavelength exiting the slit to have traveled the same distance and exit the same size slit hole.